Hello and welcome back to Lift Your Moving Marketing, your go-to podcast for marketing insights in the moving industry. I'm Christina. I'm here to guide you through another key concept in the core strategy. Today we're talking about expand the E in core. This is where you take all the good relationships you've built and grow them into something even bigger. Remember, we've had to walk through the cultivate your leads we're going to originate your leads, we're going to relate with your leads, and now we're going to expand. We're going to expand to grow. So expand means for your moving company, it's about taking your customer service to the next level and making sure every customer feels super special. You've made those connections. Now it's time to strengthen them and spread the word. I'm going to give you four concepts that will expand your moving experience, especially for your customers. So first, exceptional customer service. I mean, I'm sure you all know this already. This isn't something new. It's almost to the point where you can't exist unless you have exceptional customer service. But let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just define this really quick. And and it means going above and beyond. I often get people that send me homepage content and it'll be quality service best moving, you know, and there's nothing to back it up. There's nothing unique about that. Everybody has quality service. I mean, by God, if you didn't have quality service, you wouldn't be in business. So I'm talking about going the extra mile to make sure everything is perfect, even the small things. This leaves a lasting impression and shows your customers that you truly care. So when you talk about exceptional customer service. What are we what are we really saying? It's about doing more than what people expect from a moving company. Think about the last time someone did something really thoughtful for you, something you didn't see coming. It felt great, right? That's the kind of feeling you want to give your customers. So, let's just paint a picture. You're helping someone move. Now, going above and beyond starts with the basics, like being on time, treating their belongings with care, But let's take it a step further. What if you noticed that they're worried about a special item, maybe a family heirloom or a fragile piece of art? Hopefully they would have told you about this before you stepped in the the house or the apartment. But as we all know, that doesn't always happen. It's sometimes a, you know, back of the mind like, oh, yes, I have this fragile piece of art. You would probably provide some very special packing for it or even transport it maybe separately for extra safety and you know it's these little thoughtful actions and you know you kind of take them by the hand you explain to them okay we're gonna we're gonna take this piece of art we're gonna use this packaging material we're gonna put it around and I remember when I had to move I had some nice artwork they used special framing around the artwork, special padding inside the box, you know, it was very well taken care of. And, you know, again, they just took that extra moment to make me feel a little bit safer about what was happening. So, you know, it's just those little small actions that kind of show that you're paying attention. Another aspect is the attitude of your team. Are they friendly? Are they approachable? Do they make an effort to kind of ease the stress of moving day with a very positive attitude? Sometimes it's a friendly conversation, or a reassuring smile that can make all the difference in a special or in a stressful situation. Now, think about unexpected touches. Could you leave a small housewarming gift at their new place? Or what about a personalized thank you note after the move? These gestures might seem small, but they can leave a really big impact. And, you know, I'm thinking a small small housewarming gift. I know every time I moved, there is just a few things that I something I was always missing when you first move in it's a little basket and I'm thinking of a little basket that maybe has that first night's meal maybe it's just mac and cheese peanut butter you know something you don't want to no one's going to cook and then maybe a clean something to clean the kitchen with maybe a fork and knife with some paper plate something for that very very first night in their new place that's a really nice special touch and it's it's a small gesture but it just people remember that. So exceptional customer service isn't just about avoiding mistakes or mishaps. It's about creating positive, memorable experiences that stick with your customers long after they move. That kind of service turns a satisfied customer into a raving fan who not only come back the next time they move, but they're going to tell their friends about how awesome you were. All right, second one, follow-up post-move. 
Follow-up post-move is also crucial. After the move, reach out, ask how everything went. Don't just send a postcard, thank you. Call them. How'd it go? Any issues? Did you find any nicks or things that we might be able to take, we have to take care of? You know, be proactive in that arena. Following up after a move, again, it might seem like a small step, but it's, oh, it's incredibly impactful. It's not just a courtesy call. It is a powerful tool in building lasting customer relationships. And so let me, let me just break it down for you. Imagine you just helped a family move. Boxes are unpacked, they're settling into their new home. Now is the perfect time to check in. Maybe the next day, maybe two days later, simple phone call, an email with an email, I would do both, or even a text, how did everything go with your move, can make just a world of difference. It shows that your service doesn't just end when the last box is unloaded or unpacked. You care about the entire moving experience. And this follow-up is your opportunity to ensure everything is met their expectations? Did they find your team helpful? Was everything handled with care? These questions not only show that you value their opinion, but they also give you essential feedback. And the feedback is like gold. If you can just, I'm sure it's very tough to get reviews and feedback can be even harder. But I think if you just make it a regular process for either sales or the project manager to have that phone call, it can really, really kind of push somebody to actually leave a review maybe on Google. And it, in addition, let's not forget, it's probably going to prevent issues later. So if they find a nick in grandma's armoire and you've, you've already reached out earlier, they might be a little friendlier about working with you to fix it. And adding a personal touch, customizing your follow-up based on their situation. If they mentioned they were moving for a new job, ask how the job went. If they were stressed about a particular aspect of the move, check if it worked out okay. And just that personalized attention, that's part of expanding and growing your marketing past the point where they're the lead, signed the contract, paid you. This is where we go a little extra step and we kind of kind of build, uh, you know, raving fans. If you're having issues with people complaining, right, about repairs or they're struggling with managing them, I recommend hiring a third party. I've got a client that really struggled with that. It wasn't that it happened a lot. It was just the follow-up process and making sure that they were getting properly reimbursed and the insurance that was involved. So he actually hired a third party. All those things go now straight to somebody else. So there's just a better customer service there and it has made a world of, of difference. And so I just, I do recommend a third party if, if you struggle with that, if you, if you don't have the team to do these necessary follow-ups for after the move. Now, the magic of the follow-ups is they can turn one-time customer into a loyal fan. And so when customers see that you're committed to their satisfaction, even after the job is done, it, you know, it builds trust and trust is key. Trust is key to turning customers into advocates for your brand. Happy customers are likely to come back for the next move and even better, they're going to tell their friends and their family, their neighbors about the great experience that they had with your company. And following along with everything, there is feedback. So you're going to be going, reaching them after the move, asking how it went, but you are going to also put into action the kind of feedback that they've given you. So it helps you understand what you're doing well and what you can improve. Plus acting on their feedback shows that you value their opinion, which can really strengthen that bond. Think of feedback as a conversation with your customers about their experience. It's like, it's like a direct line to what they liked and maybe what you could do better. Uh, and when you completed a move, ask your customers to share their thoughts. And again, this can be a survey. I recommend a phone call, an email, a text message, uh, just whatever you can do to make it easy for them. Perhaps, you know, sometimes the online form is okay. I just don't feel like that really makes, it doesn't drive them over, which I had to say, I really am trying to get them over to Google local, the Google business profile and leave a review there or in another platform that you find that you get a lot of your leads from. Again, it's kind of, kind of the point is to drive their review in that area. But at the same time, you are looking for their feedback, not just, hey, it's a great move. I kind of want to get a little bit more detail about that. That's where it gets difficult when you send them over to Google Business Profile. Typically, it's, you know, three or four sentences and, and you're you're not getting the, the detail. And this is where I feel like 
if you can, a, f- a survey is the best, but no more than three or four questions, max five, don't do, ask any more and try and keep it in the very, very quick. It should take them 30 seconds to a minute max to fill out that form. So say a customer suggests that your team, say somebody has filled out this form, right? And one of it has, your team could be more careful with fragile items, maybe slow down a little bit, maybe the padding was too thin right there. That's a direct tip on how to improve. Maybe you could offer additional training to your staff or look into better packing material. Maybe what you, it's a switch that you made. Now you realize, Ooh, that's going to cost us more in the long run than buying cheap packing material. So let's just go back to what we had and now we don't have any problems. So, so again, when you act on that feedback, it does show that you are committed to that excellence. But feedback, again, it's not just about finding flaws. I'm also interested in understanding what you're doing right. If several customers rave about how friendly and efficient your team is, that's a strength you build on. That is great marketing material that you share everywhere. If you're known for that, then that is, you you almost become part of your vernacular and how you speak about your business. So listen for those cues, those things that they they talk about and they rave about you and use that as a strength that you kind of build on. And maybe you can highlight this in your marketing, show them customers that friendliness is a big part of what you offer. Be sure, be sure you want to share it with your team as well. Please don't keep this to yourself. Don't just put it on your website. Share it with the team. Share the love. Let them know that they're, they are an extension of you. So being friendly, helpful, kind, careful, that, that, all, that always interprets that, hey, the more, that means we're, we can get more clients, means I can keep you employed, I can give you bonuses, I can pay you more. So just knowing that having a smile when you show up can help with that customer loyalty. And ask for their input too. Let's not forget part of this is, is what, what they're seeing. They're going to have conversations as well. So ask them, hey, how'd it go? Anything that you saw was a problem? Anything good happened? Did they, what did they say? And to kind of get, get a read from them. And sometimes you can even share how you implemented customer feedback. I love these. I love being able to show almost a case study of a move. So you, before middle unpack or unload then unpack and then the final result and kind of share maybe a complicated move maybe a a special move of a piano or a very very large wall-to-wall armoire that you had to take apart put together you know whatever that was and and share that case study share with them what you did that's a very powerful way to show your leads your prospects your customers what you can do and how you've been helpful. And again, be sure to share that on social media, in your newsletter, on your website, share all that information. Let's talk referrals. Encourage your happy customers to spread the word. You could offer incentives like a a discount maybe on the next mood if they refer a friend. Word of mouth is, it's powerful. Uh, When people love your service, they're going to tell their friends, they're going to tell their neighbors. And it's, gold in this moving business. Most of my clients say that's probably where I'll, I wouldn't say half, I would say about 30% of the business comes from referrals. How do you get more of these valuable refer- referrals? So let's kind of break that down a little bit. First, it's all about making sure your customers are more than satisfied. They need to be delighted. This means doing everything we talked about so far, providing exceptional service, following up, valuing feedback. When customers have an amazing experience, they're naturally inclined to share it. But you can also give them a little nudge. Encourage your customers to spread the word about your company. A simple way to do this is through incentives. For example, you could, again, offer a discount on the next move. I don't know how how that helpful that is, but I would recommend not a discount for the next move, but a discount for a friend or a neighbor, and they get a piece of that, $50, and then your neighbor gets $100 off. So it, it behooves them to share that. Everybody wins maybe a gift, a gift card to a popular store or a restaurant. And so these incentives serve two purposes. One, obviously the referral. They also give them a reason to talk about your company. It's like saying, hey, we appreciate you so, so much for telling others about us. 
here's a little something to show our gratitude. Word of mouth is incredibly powerful. People tend to trust recommendations from friends and family and neighbors more than any other advertisement. I belong to a couple of local Facebook groups, neighborhood Facebook groups, and that's typically the first thing we kind of see is, hey, I'm, I'm moving. Does anybody recommend a mover? Realtors are, are another great referral source. Just whatever you do, you want to try and make sure that referrals are easy for your customers. You want to somehow provide them with simple tools like I don't know, a referral card, um, an email with a code. Make sure that your website and your social media platforms are easy to navigate and share and find those referrals. So it's easier for them to spread the word if they can kind of share a referral page or a coupon that you have rather than, you know, hunting it down. Because you know what they're going to do. You're going to tell them about it and they're going to immediately forget. So I would for sure send them a follow-up email with a referral. Keep them on the email list and just always at the footer of the email offer some kind of referral discount. I recommend giving that person a referral and then a discount for the person they're referring to. Remember, expand in the core strategy. It's all about taking those relationships you built during your originating, getting the word out, relating to your leads, and now we're expanding. Happy customer is not just a repeat customer, they're your best advocate. They all share great experiences with others and that's how you're gonna build a very strong, reputable brand. And this is a way that you can step away from paper leads solely. This is how you get away from that. I'm not saying don't use paper leads. I'm saying don't make it your sole method of getting new leads. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on Expand. I hope these insights help you take your moving company to new heights. And join us next time we circle back, dive deeper into some more strategies that can help lift your moving marketing. So keep exceeding expectations. Watch your business grow. Thanks so much. Have a great day.